G'day, my name is John Tasco and I'm a Senior Spatial Information Officer with the Department of Natural Resources, Mines and Energy in the Queensland Government. I'm one of our key leads with our 3D program at the moment and really pleased today to introduce you to our talk together with Sunshine Coast Council about best practice approach to building 3D cityscapes and a recent project we've done up on the Sunshine Coast. The background to this is we're working well within the ANSLIC principles for spatially enabled digital twins. We want to make sure that we're capturing valuable and usable data that aligns with the digital twin principles, enables broad collaboration, and lets us implement the appropriate technology and data management techniques to make these data sets usable today and into the future. Within the Southeast Queensland context, the SEQ City Deal proposition has been a massive driver to support the emergence of digital twin data sets, as well as the use of high resolution 3D spatial information to provide valuable information to all levels of government, as well as private industry, and help them to collaborate in how they develop and improve the region in which we all live. And so the Sunshine Coast is one of these core sections in that region. Over the past several years, we've been conducting a number of 3D projects, which have directly enabled us to work within the 3D space. Since 2018, we've done broad scale city captures, including Brisbane, Ipswich, and most recently over the Sunshine Coast. And to supplement this, we've also captured historic aerial photography, scanned it, and then from there, digitized it into high resolution 3D models of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Local groups are then also supplementing with very high resolution capture from drones to further enrich their 3D data sets. In the Sunshine Coast example, we went above and beyond with the largest single capture of 3D data yet conducted by the Queensland Government and continuing our pattern of collaboration with local councils to maximise the benefit of these projects and to ensure they can deliver the greatest interest to the greatest number of stakeholders. The project is split across three resolutions, a medium resolution at seven centimetres over 700 square kilometres or one third of the council's area, which you can see on the left here, a high resolution capture over a targeted corridor and key development areas of approximately 15 square kilometres, and lastly, two and a half linear kilometres of street level capture, with all of these data sets integrated together to provide a holistic as well as targeted ultra high resolution perspectives for key areas of the coast. Key lessons we learned through this process, particularly in the quality assurance and delivery, are that collaboration is essential. We we're able to collaborate both in the funding of this project to get more areas and get higher resolution areas, but also in how we conducted our quality assurance and distribution of these data sets, splitting the task up and making it much easier to deliver a high quality product and to set our expectations correctly around data quality and draw on previous learnings from previous projects. When it comes to delivery of this data, there was certainly plenty of complexity. From integrating multiple resolutions into a single product for discovery and publication, but also simply handling over 15 terabytes of data coming through across multiple products with multiple uh, idiosyncrasies, and on top of all of that, multiple coordinate systems and dealing with both how software can handle these different data sets, as well as in individuals and their existing solutions and technologies. In the publication of this data, we've used a broad variety of technologies, but primarily based on the Esri stack. At its core is the use of ArcGIS Online, which Tim will touch on more later, and supporting both coordinate systems, one per uh, partner, to distribute them to as many people as possible. Integrated into this as well as use of the ArcGIS JavaScript API, which provides the capacity to customize the applications around this 3D data. And for broader distribution, we've also been using the Esri based Queensland Globe and the emerging Queensland Spatial Digital Twin. Hi everyone, I'm Tim McGuinness, a GIS and data scientist at Sunshine Coast Council. For those of you who don't know where the Sunshine Coast is, we're located about an hour north of Brisbane in Queensland the ninth largest LGA in Australia, with 350,000 people. We're expanding rapidly in population and economic growth. Sunshine Coast Council is a very innovative organisation, with a number of interesting projects completed recently. Shown here is a 15 megawatt solar farm with about 58,000 solar panels, completed in 2017. 
We are the first LGA in Australia to offset 100% of its electricity consumption with renewable energy. The Sunshine Coast Airport is Australia's fastest growing airport. In June this year, construction was completed on a new 2.4 kilometre runway, now able to receive much larger wide body aircraft. A new 550 kilometre undersea fibre optic cable was recently landed into Maroochydore. It will provide Australia's fastest connection to Asia and the second fastest to the USA. The next two projects are currently underway and will make extensive use of the new 3D model. Private car, private car travel makes up the majority of our community's chosen method of transport. With 200,000 more people living on the coast by 2041, doing nothing is not an option. Adding more traffic lanes for private cars is not an option. The Mass Transit Project is designing a modern rapid transit system as the backbone of the region's future public transport network. A greenfield 53 hectare site, the Maroochydore City Centre Priority Development Area is planned for development over 20 years. 40% of the site is allocated for parks and waterways. The new city centre will have state-of-the-art technology providing digital solutions for street lighting, car parking, water, power and signage, and Australia's first underground vacuum system for automated waste collection. Council has commenced construction of its new nine level city hall building here, and we'll see more about that later. Enough talking, let's have a look at the model and some of the available 3D tools. Here you can see the entire model, which is published in ArcGIS Online. Note that it's pretty easy to see the gap between the model sections when zoomed out this far, even though they do match perfectly when zoomed in. Turning on the aerial imagery underneath really helps to hide these issues. Even though the model doesn't cover the entire LGA, we do have a base level of 3D data available. I'm zooming into the town of Yandina, which is outside the capture area. Council flew a high-res LiDAR survey in 2018, which provides the ground elevation surface. We've also created 3D building multi-patches from the classified building points. Let's have a look at Nambour, part of the medium resolution area. This is captured by aeroplane, so you do get some issues under structures and vegetation. It's a trade-off between how much in capture, at which resolution, versus the available budget. Now we'll jump across to Maroochydore. ArcGIS Online is streaming the 3D data to the browser in the background, and it does take a little while for all the data to be loaded. I'm using a custom web page with the ArcGIS JavaScript API version 4.16. Everything you see here is done in about a thousand lines of JavaScript. Now the model definitely looks great, very pretty, but it needs to be effective in our day-to-day -day work. We'll start to have a look at some of the tools we can use with the model. First up is the daylight tool. This allows you to set the position of the sun on any day, at any time of the day, and see where shadows will be falling. So we'll start here at 6am on this day, and the, shadow, the sun shining from the west behind us and the shadows falling, and as we move through the day, through midday, through the late afternoon, you can see exactly where the shadows are going to be falling. This is a great tool to see the impact of buildings and the effect of the shadows on neighbouring properties. Here is the 3D measurement tool. As I move the cursor around, the scene is showing me a constant elevation line across all the features in the scene. Quite useful seeing where the relative elevation across everything is. I'll click on the ground and we'll measure up to the roof of this building. So not only are we getting the direct distance in 3D, but we're also getting the horizontal and vertical components. Quite easy to use. One of the widgets in the JavaScript API, but not yet available in ArcGIS Online, is the line of sight tool. Start by clicking an observation point, and then one or more target points. The color-coded lines, green for visible and red for not visible, make it really easy to see where you can and can't see in the scene. While we're here, let's zoom into one of the street level capture areas for a closer look. This is Ocean Street in Maroochydore, with complex features such as outdoor dining areas and pedestrian zones. We are extremely happy with the level of detail captured. You may notice something strange. Where are all the cars and people? There wasn't a COVID-19 lockdown in place. 
Aerometrics took so many photos from so many angles, they can easily remove people from the model. Let's have a look at some other types of 3D data and some more interactive tools. Uh, in this scenario, we'll say these two houses are going to be demolished. So I'll just turn off the model and a new building is going to be built. So this is a new house that's going to be built. So this is a Revit file um, that was imported into ArcGIS Pro, uh, georeferenced into place and then published as a 3D scene, which has now been added to my scene view. The interesting thing about this is because it's a Revit file, everything is already categorized uh, into types of the building. So I can turn off the roof, turn off the internal ceilings and the walls, really work your way through the model and see how it's constructed. Everything is attributed as well. So all the attributes from Revit have come across as well. So one of the first interactive tools I'm going to show you is the slice tool. So you can slice by both a horizontal and a vertical plane. So I've put my slice plane in there and quickly and easily move down through the building structure. Quite nifty tool, especially on very large buildings. Now, you've probably already noticed the problem that I had to turn that 3D model off in order to completely show the building. Um, this is a bit of a problem, uh, and until recently you'd probably have to somehow edit the model and publish a brand new scene with those buildings clipped out. That was really a lot of work to do something quite simple. Luckily, in the latest version of the JavaScript API, Esri has released a mesh modification widget, and I've got that here as a tool. So I'm going to clip the mesh by simply drawing a polygon, polygon around the area to clip around these two buildings. Double click to finish, apply the modification, and then there we are. The integrated mesh has now been clipped just in that area. When you think about it, that's really quite a powerful tool to have in the browser. browser. You can also do this in ArcGIS Pro in the latest version 2.6 as well, and that's excellent. Here you can see stage one of the new Marichiro City Centre, brand new and ready for development. But since the area is captured, there's been quite a bit happening already. And one of the new, one of the other types of 3D data are simple uh, multi batch features created in ArcGIS Pro, which we can use to keep them all up to date. That's one of the key questions we've been asked by internal stakeholders. How are you going to get this model up to date in an ever-changing environment? What we can see here, this building in grey, Foundation Place, has actually been completed. The Holiday Inn in orange has been approved. Our new City Hall, shown in yellow, is under construction. And the Cove, residential development, is proposed. So it's quite easy to create these simplified uh, multi-patch buildings be able to show what's going to be developed in the future. What we hope is that moving forward in the future, BIM uh, models will become a lot more common. So we have a BIM of our new city hall model. This wasn't a Revit building, this was an IFC model. Um, simply use the quick import tool in ArcGIS Pro to import this, correctly geo-referenced it, and then export it into a scene and then publish straight into ArcGIS Online. It's really with these large building models you begin to see the power of a digital twin and using ArcGIS Online to publish this data. The last interactive widget I'm going to show you is some 3D editing tools. Behind the scenes I've got a couple of hosted feature layers, one for 3D points and one for 3D polygons. That allows us to quickly and easily add some 3D models into our scene. I'm using the standard Esri library of 3D models. So in this case, for example, maybe we would like to put a bus stop on the map. So I'll click. And I can use the interactive rotation tool. There's our bus stop in the scene. And that's now saved in our hosted feature layer and will be preserved. Uh, for scale, I can add a car in the scene. Make sure it's going the right way. And, add. and landscape designer might like to add some uh, extra trees in to see how it will look. Um, they can work off interactive uh, heights and meters 
I'll make this tree 10 meters tall. And maybe we'll have a eucalyptus tree in this lot somewhere that could be 20 meters tall. It allows the user to quickly and easily add. But it's not just points. I mentioned we've got a polygon layer in there as well. Let's say, for example, we know a building is going to be developed in this area, but we don't have the plans yet. Quickly and easily go and add just a simple uh, master building that's going to be a residential tower. Double click to finish, and it's, we know it's going to be 30 meters tall. So a quick and easy way to do some simple 3D modeling all within the browser without even needing ArcGIS Pro. What we're looking at here is ArcGIS Pro and in Pro we have loaded a 3D model of a proposed skate park for Deep Beach in Calandra. This was originally designed in SketchUp by one of our internal teams and we're constantly tinkering with our workflows to come up with the best ways to import these 3D files. Uh, each file format seems to have its own idiosyncrasies and it can be a bit difficult to deal with um, but I think you can agree this is a great result. Now for the last part of my demonstration uh, we'll take a look at some virtual reality. Uh, this is Darren wearing the VR headset and we're looking at exactly what Darren's looking at. So he's navigating his way through the Ocean Street street level capture that we looked at before in 3D. Um, what we've found is the street level capture is really effective in virtual reality. Um, and what we'll see just up here is some garbage bins that Darren's actually placed as 3D models in the scene. They don't exist yet. So we think being able to use this sort of technology for customer engagement and you know, seeing concepts before they're built is really quite powerful. Let's go back to the slides and talk about Council's experience publishing the model in ArcGIS Online and some ticks and tricks we learned along the way. Firstly, why ArcGIS Online? We have the full ArcGIS Infinite Enterprise stack available in-house. There are a number of differences between the environments to think about. Enterprise has a large infrastructure cost. You're going to see numerous servers, licensing costs for the software and an administrator to keep it all running. Online has none of that. However, the cost of internal storage is negligible, where ArcGIS Online uses credits. The enterprise software must be manually upgraded with new releases, and we know how difficult they can be to schedule, whereas online is just upgraded automatically by Esri. In ArcGIS Online, to share something publicly, it can be done in a couple of clicks, but enterprise will need all sorts of modifications to the organization's security rules, such as opening ports externally. Enterprise is a big winner in performance with everything running at internet speeds, where with online everything is coming across the internet. Lastly, user access. ArcGIS Online is either shared publicly or to named users which require a license. You can't store your model in online and make it only accessible to your internal users without paying for licenses. So let's talk about the hosting cost for our 3D model in ArcGIS Online. It's a pretty simple formula. 1.2 credits per gigabyte per month, where a credit, credit currently costs 15.4 cents. Our model, elevation surface, and imagery layers are at 545 gigabytes, which comes out at about $100 a month. Some of the scene layer packages were large, up to, up to 55 gigabytes in size. It took about six hours to upload one of those packages and another one or two hours to publish. The good news is that out of 18 packages, we only had a couple of failed uploads. We chose to use ArcGIS Online as well, and also to not overload our normal production servers. Everything I've showed you here today could be done with a single ArcGIS Pro license and an ArcGIS Online Creator account, a very cheap level of entry. I encourage everyone to keep an eye on the ArcGIS blog, especially the What's New posts. Here is an extract an extract for some posts where Esri introduced the ArcGIS Pro mesh modification and extract multi-patch tools. And another one with the JavaScript API scene modification class. These new features totally changed our workflow overnight. To modify the mesh layers previously, we had come up with a multi-step process. Export part of the model, import it into 3D modeling software and modify it, export and re-import to Pro and republish to ArcGIS Online as a new scene. We can now do, 
we we'll now do it inside the browser with a few mouse clicks. Imagine if we, if we had missed these announcements. If you're considering doing anything a bit out of the ordinary or want access to some tools that are not available in out-of-the-box app builders, then I encourage you to invest in the JavaScript API. The sample code section is fantastic. Here's a modification sample page, which has not only source code, but a working example that you can immediately use to see how it works. The 3D view I demonstrated was basically created by copying, pasting, and slightly modifying code samples from here. I'll now, now hand you back over to John, who runs through, through some final thoughts. In conclusion, this has been a fantastic project, which has clearly demonstrated the benefits of collaboration across multiple tiers of government to provide multiple benefits. We're able to increase the area of data captured by pooling our resources, drastically reduce the, the times that either agency would have spent to quality assure and, and make sure that we had the best data that we could, and finally been able to share the benefits and knowledge we'd gained through our respective projects and different data captures over the previous years. When we look at this holistically, 3D is becoming more and more the new normal. Councils, state governments and federal all see significant benefits in the use of 3D data to represent the real world in a digital space. And it can immediately bring in the interest of stakeholders as your own staff to help them understand a location and what you're doing in that from a development or simply as a reference point. We know that increasingly using applications and the technology around this are beginning to meet our business requirements. Whether this is the use of VR or AR technologies to bring in 3D data sets and visualize them in the real world, or just the simple capacity of gaming engines and available web app technology to distribute this data and make it consumable without the need for multiple plug-in hard drives and really beefy computers. The last major learning we've had in this space is simply the variety and the capacity of the technology stacks that we're already using. The Esri platform has provided us with significant capacity to load in large amounts of data and distribute them quickly and easily. And this is a space we're only seeing further evolution within. From the emerging capacity to clip and mask out parts of, the, uh, of models through to the ability to integrate it with other types of spatial data, both in the 3D and 2D context. Moving forward, there is more than enough capacity within our existing stack to challenge ourselves to build better applications to meet user need and to build more and more upon the existing 3D and 2D data sets that we have.